Oh, here we go. There we go. There we go, finally. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. This might be a chain pickerel. Oh my gosh. There's no way that's a bass. It's gotta be a chain pickerel. Yes, I knew it. Oh my gosh. Just lost just just through the bait. Oh. Just through the bait. Come here. Alright, what's good fam? Man, it's been a few weeks. It, it, it's, it's literally like that every single time I talk. So, uh, man, let me bring you up to speed. I don't care how long or how many times you've made videos or how long you've been shooting videos uh, for YouTube, it's gonna come a time. Uh, it's gonna come a time where you lose footage. So, man, I tell you what, I I had everything done. Let, let me let me summarize. The first video we did was showing you some tackle organization. So I went through tackle organization, buying different things. The second video we went through putting stuff in tackle boxes, right? Uh, the Busby system, uh, we started putting things away. And then the, this last video should have been me doing the big reveal. I shot that video. I went fishing, super excited. We had a break in the temperature. I went fishing that, you know, that same week. And I don't know, man, I, I lost the footage. So <laughs> without further ado, this is the video that I've been promising you. This is my tackle reveal. So had to go out to the garage and bring everything back up. Sit it on the table. Now I'm going to try to uh, do the same thing I did. And I honestly don't remember everything that I, got, that I went through the last time I did this, but we're gonna try to do this as much uh, as close to what I had envisioned for the final reveal as possible. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with my ancillary things that, that I bought uh, or that I had that I would always pack in terms of my tackle loadout. Uh, and that would be number one, a scale, right? You get Big Bertha in the boat, uh, worst thing you could do is not get a weight on it. And you can, you know, pontificate and tell embellish stories all you want about that five pound bass that you caught. It's nothing like putting that bad boy, um, uh, uh, hanging that bad boy up on a scale and showing people uh, what you bought. The next thing, since we're, since we use a bunch of high dollar lures, a lure knocker. I got this from Bass Pro, but it's basically a string uh, <clears throat> and it's, a big giant heavy lead weight, a uh, little circle you can put your your uh, your string through, string through, and you slide this down, and this thing here goes down, and it breaks your lure through. Now, some I've seen doesn't have the grab chain. I really like the grab chains because if you're fishing with treble baits, these here can link onto that treble bait. Even if you bend out a hook, doesn't really matter. You're concerned with getting the bait back, so I do like these kind of dangly chain hooks to get it back up. So uh, I'm fairly certain I did another video on my channel, man. I'll try to find it and put that link in the description. But I did a video on me actually on the water with the lure stuck, pulling this bad boy out and retrieving my lure. I was on my kayak for probably a year or so ago. Uh, a big magnet tray. Uh, this magnet tray, I just sit it on the deck of my boat. And when I'm done with lures, instead of trying to figure out how to put them back where they belong, I let them dry out. I just drop them on a little magnet. You can see I got a bunch of stuff here already. And then other things like crappie jigs, I can throw in there. Now, this is something you guys probably are not thinking about. So this right here, I don't even know what the name of it is, but it is like a, I bought it because I was, I think, replacing the screen on one of my Android phones or an iPad or something like that. And I needed one of these to be able to pry open the case. So ever since I, I, I started using these, man, uh, I think one day I was in a garage and I had a backlash. I was testing out a lure and I had a backlash and I was like trying to get my little, my, my paws in there to try to un, un, unscrew that bird's nest and I couldn't do it. And I reached over and I grabbed one of these. Uh, man, I will tell you, this thing has saved me on more than one occasions in getting out 
bird's nest. It's just super useful. I always keep one around in the off event I get it in the rare event I get a bird's nest uh, and I use those to, 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 to help me go through the bird's nest. All right, let's get into the non Busby stuff first and then we we'll get into the Busby stuff. So this right here, I bought on Amazon. I think it was like 20 bucks or maybe 20 bucks or something like that. Sorry about that. And what I use this for is swim baits, right? I do like this because it has perforated back. So if it's wet, you stick it in here, it'll drain off the dry. So I don't have to worry about uh, my hooks or anything rusting up. But man, I'll tell you, this thing here does everything I need from my big glide baits to even smaller. Smaller glides are multi-jointed swim baits, uh, even, even itty bitty multi-jointed <laughs> swim baits. And I also have up top, some people are gonna poo poo on this, other people are not. I have <laughs> my umbrella rigs, right? So, so you know what I mean? I, I really like this. You know, I, I initially, I was kind of apprehensive because it does tend to, you would think it would tend to smash the actual tail of your swim baits up. But look at that, it's pretty much straight. These are, uh, we'll go over some of these later, but, but these are uh, Demikis as well as Mega Bass, has a dome shed. Uh, but yeah, so again, these, these, you don't have to use these. There's all kind of contraptions. I only use a mini or I don't think this is a micro. I think this is a mini, uh, but I do have some from a tackle warehouse unboxing. I think there are some micros that I bought, or maybe this is a micro. Who knows? Bottom line is I don't use gigantic A-Rig. That's called an umbrella. But it's not a -rig. Um, I don't use gigantic A-Rigs. These are big enough for, for where I fish and they work. So see if I was, you know, hunting for like striped bass out in the California Delta or something like that. But now nah, I'm in this little bitty, little bitty reservoirs and lakes out here in Virginia. All right, so we gotta keep it moving. Somehow I lost connection, but I'm hoping this thing is still recording. I do sit flashing lights on this. All right, so let's get into the quick cubes. So quick cube from Busby. Man, look guys, I'm just, I'm just shooting straight. I'm gonna need you guys to get the medium deeps or the large deeps back. It's been like several months and we've not been able to get this stuff done. So I had to make some, I had to call an audible. The only one I was able to get was this one. I didn't want to get this, but I ended up getting the Busby cube and it ended up being a good thing that I was not able to get the quick cube because there's some functionality to this that I'll explain that I absolutely adore about this kit. But let's go into my smaller Busby quick cube. Uh, let's face it, man, these quick cubes are flipping awesome. Absolutely love it. You can cram a boatload of bait inside of these. I got some spark shad. I got some bag draft. I got some gigantic Z-Man elastic. I probably should put that in here, uh, but I think the reason why I didn't put it in here, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I may put that in here, but a bunch of mega bad stuff and a bunch of gigantic Kitex. So here's my, uh, I'll call this medium size, medium to large size uh, swim bait compliment. If I had that larger uh, quick cube busby, I'd be able to put a boatload of other things inside of this. But these are my larger paddle tail or mag draft type level swim baits in the medium quick cube. Now, Buzzman bait blocks. Got this thing half off. Uh, at Green Top out here in Richmond. Uh, man, this thing is amazing. I, in this, dude, they're expensive. They're like 50 bucks. I mean, I kid you not, they're like 50 bucks. I pay like 20, 25 bucks for this one. Maybe a little less than that uh, with military discount included. I'm not certain, but it was in the mid 20s. And I think this thing is freaking awesome. The only thing I don't like, well, I guess, I guess uh, it does. Uh, I guess since I keep it in a chamber, it doesn't really slide around that much. I thought this here was gonna be a little bit more sticky or tackier than possible, but the bottom line is, it does, if you have to drop it in something that's wet in water, your baits don't get wet, which is pretty freaking awesome. But for me, I keep them inside the plastics anyway. Let's get into the things that I do like about this baits. One is the external zipper. So if you look at if you look at the bug colony, there is no external storage. Um, if you look at this, there is external storage on the back. What I like to do here is put in my my fish grippers, pliers, uh, other ancillary devices like the rattlesnaker. This is how you put the little glass ball bead into your soft plastics, much like the Guggen Squad has put in the. Uh, it's like that little Ned bait. I can't remember what it's called. Matter of fact, I think I may actually have one in here. I'll pull that out and show you what I'm talking about. And some pliers. Never go anywhere 
uh, without pliers. Dude, I did that one time. I think I was in like Florida fishing. And I didn't have pliers with me. Man, it's bad. Even here, uh, I did have some pliers one time, but I caught like a bluegill or something, and it was it was throat hooked, or was it a small bass? It was throat hooked, and I couldn't get it out, so I got something to get that out, and I'll show you that in a second as well. It's actually in one of the busby boxes. All right, let's take a look at the bait box. And I know I'm going fast, but I wanted to get, keep this video under 15 to 15 minutes. Uh, it's probably not gonna be under 10, probably not gonna be under 15 either, but maybe right at the 20 minute mark. So, other things I like is it has an internal uh, I would call this door pocket, right? And in this door pocket, I put small things like mustad hooks, all things to support my soft plastics. Now, I do have a terminal tackle box, which is completely fine. I have a bunch of terminal tackle into that. But the good news about this is if I was if I was shore fishing, if I was beating the bank, I could just grab this here and move on. I don't have to grab a ginormous um, um, Busby bag and go with me. I can grab this and go along with it. Now, Let's talk about some of the baits that I do have. So all Z-Man stuff, all of my Z-Man stuff, I, I do have a soft plastic Busby box. I do not keep my Z-Man stuff in there for, I don't know, for whatever reason. Now, what I, what I did say in my last video is that I've not heard any reports whatsoever indicating that the Elastec uh, plastics and the stuff that they put on there damage any of the bait trays inside of the Busby. I haven't seen that either, but I do like to keep mine a little bit more organized, so I just keep them, uh, some of them have clamps there, but keep them in the package. Earlier, I talked about the Rattlesnaker from Z-Man. Uh, this rattling made it. I don't know if you get it. So, Guggen makes this bait, uh, it's a net bait, uh, and it has ball bearings, and then most other baits don't come with that, so that rattlesnake will allow you to put that same uh, ball bearing inside of your soft plastic. So, a bunch of Guggen, Crack and Carl love that, a uh, bunch of paddle shell swim bait. Z-Man even started making, this is like a tiny tickler, yeah, tiny tickler, but you know what? I found that crap, we love these. So, pro tip, I gave that one to you for free. Not even gonna charge you cats for it. All right, moving on. So I also have Mega Bass stuff. I do love my Hazardome Shads. Uh, I'm super excited about uh, the larger Hazardome Shads. I haven't caught fish on one of these yet. It's kind of odd, right? Um, but to be fair, I haven't fished a lot. I'm gonna try to do some damage this year with it. Now, I'm gonna show you one of my secret baits. I think the first time I heard of this bait was, man, like several years ago, probably three or four years ago from Greg Blanchard. Dude, he was fishing this bait. I think he was, he was bed fishing. It's called uh, the Real Deal Shad. Uh, Big Bite Baits. Man, it, this is pre, what's the six cents bait name? Dude, I'm, I forget what it's called. But <laughs> these are long, came long before that. I'm gonna go off script really quick, right quick. And I'm gonna show you this freaking split tail, split tail shad, Real Deal Shad. I mean, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but look at this thing. It is absolutely amazing. It looks exactly like a perch. Has a has has a belly slit in it. Man, you just I mean, hook up a. I mean, you could you utilize multiple types. You could do an EWG. You could hook it through here, or you could hook it like. But before before six cents, everybody went crazy over six cents. We had these right here, and these right here absolutely destroy them. You could man, you could even put these on like a, a ball jig head. Um, you could uh, uh, swim them like a swim bait. You could put them on, you can even put them on a drop shot, right? Um, shaky heads, you could do all kinds of things uh, with these, but I absolutely love them. I'm gonna do some damage with them this spring. All right, now, got some smaller things there. Now, this is not supposed to be, what am I doing? This is not supposed to be, hey, show me bait, bait reviews. I'm just supposed to be showing you guys how I built this out. So again, um, um, I really like this because of the amenity of this bait box. Uh, I was really waiting on the Busby to give me their medium pack and, and thank God that I wasn't able to find it and I was able to find something like this. I truly like this. It's right inside of my, my tiny uh, John boat and it gets the job done. Now, let's talk about some Busby boxes that are outside of the Colony 28Ts. Um, this very small, I think it's a 15T, um, colony 8 I'm sorry, eight, Colony 8T, and then this is a 15T, but 8T, I use this for my BFS baits. Uh, I don't take this with me every time, and I don't have a whole boatload of B, BFS baits, but I do, uh, when I do go BFS fishing, I can take this story in my other backpack. I don't have to take all of this, and don't have to worry about it. I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, 
hey man, why don't you just use one of these boxes to put your put your um, BFS baits in? I don't want to do that because I don't want to have to carry one of these big boxes anytime I want to beat the bank and do BFS fishing. So I just grab this, put it in a cargo pocket, I put it in my other bag, and I keep it moving. Things I have in here are small jerk baits, um, uh, lipless crankbaits, very tiny um, uh, spinner baits, uh, small jig heads so I can put on that hazardong shad, and I can fish it that way. All right, this next one, uh, this 15T, I was gonna use it for terminal tackle, ended up deciding to use this for crappie. So this is my crappie box. And you can see I have these labeled with the label marker on that. So my crappie box, man, oh my gosh. This is, uh, I love crappie fishing. So <laughs> I spent a, a great deal of time setting this box up, man. Everything from, from freaking hair jigs to salmon color straight tails to kind of like creature creature baits man all kinds of perch looking um uh i wouldn't even call it larvae but perch perch looking uh baits man this box here and if i don't catch crappie this season we're gonna have a whole lot of issues because i put i spent a great deal of time in and building out this box maybe i'll do a separate video uh, let me know down below if you want me to do a separate crappie uh, loadout fishing video and i will do that all right let's move on let's get into what you guys came here for i know you guys want the busby that's all you came here for that's all good so here are the busbies here are the busby boxes uh that we're doing this Initially, when I wanted to do these, I actually bought one. I thought that was going to be great for my loadout. Unfortunately, um, it was just not enough. I was piling baits in, and I was like, "Okay, I need that. Okay, I need, you know, I need jerk baits. Okay, I need this. Like, okay, you know, I need deep dive, deep diving cranks." And and it just became untenable. So I had to move to the two Busby systems, and I'm going to show you how they're set up. One is, one is this one might be okay. Uh, and I have them set up in different ways, and I'm going to explain to you why. <clears throat> this is all my soft plastics and terminal tackle box. Now I'm just going to pull all of them out. Notice the orientation of these things. These are sitting flat. Even though you can stand these up and store them like this, I have them sitting flat for this one very reason. It's because of these, right? I didn't want to, some of my baits are, are, are vertical and um, horizontal, and when you turn it, turn it up on the side, it comes like this. So these baits tend to, uh, you know, meander down to the bottom, and I didn't want that. I wanted them to be flat. Uh, these are all of my, um, all of my singles, worms, uh, trick worms, or whatever. Same scenario, same scenario with my paddle tail swim bait. So I much rather sit them flat rather than on the side so it doesn't crush those tails that I have in there. Now, now that you know how I have it, why I have it oriented the way I have it, I'll show you my loadouts. Real quick, show you all of my loadouts. Uh, <clears throat> bunch of stuff from Zoom, bunch of stuff from Robo Worm, bunch of stuff from Sixth Sense, right? Sixth Sense is primarily most of the stuff, Divine Shaky Heads, uh, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's just it's just what I use. I've, I've, I've built an affinity for those baits and they do a great job for me, but I gotta have my rubber worms, I gotta have my zooms. Uh, some of those colors like a pink or like this fire crawl red uh, that I don't see uh, in six, 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 in some of the sizes of the Sixth Sense baits that I want. So this is kind of like, Again, my creature and my flukes. Open it up. Um, now, what you see, you're probably keying in right now on this bait. So somehow, I don't know what I was doing, but I put this either up against. Uh, oh, I did. I know what I did. I put it up against these. So the Yamamoto's will bleed over into the other bait. So I was able to savage it a little bit, uh, and I took them out and put them into into a darker bait. For example, these are Yamamoto's as well, right? So I, I love these for chatterbait trolls, but it's super dark. I can put this one in here, which I know bleeds like a reddish orange color. It bleeds and it won't do anything against the black and blue. And then ironically enough, the black and blue doesn't bleed over onto the orange, but it will definitely bleed over onto your white. So please keep those separate. That'll be my advice to you. 
I also have these uh, Fluke soft, soft Jerk Baits. Uh, absolutely adore those. Made by Zoom. I got some other name brands uh, over here. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty sick baits. Uh, some Yamamoto uh, creature baits. I think Greg Rush, Griff, not Greg Rush, uh, Greg Blanchard calls that uh, like a cheater. Put it on a, on a jig. Um, brush hogs. Uh, you know, I got some D bombs in here. Man, all kinds of cool creature baits. So that's that one. Uh, getting over to one of my favorite soft plastic box. That is your paddle tail swim bait. Boat load of link, a boat load of uh, six sigma stuff. I'm sorry, six cent stuff. Uh, it's right here on my shirt, so I don't mess it up. But I continuously mess it up. Uh, also got a few crawl creature baits in here as well. But for the most part, they're your divine uh, swim baits from uh, all the way from your three point, um, three point two or three point three all the way up to your your, your like four point fours. I even have a few whales in here. I do love the whales. I'm gonna try to use, utilize that, um, that line through jig head to do some stuff with that. I haven't fished it like that before. I've only fished it with a belly weighted um, uh, e EWG style hook. So I'll do that as well. The juggle minnow. Uh, you know, we're we about, we about to go get them with these right here. Uh, I got I got the new hooks for the uh, hover, hover rig, so I am super excited to try that. And they came out with these bad boys, the very tiny, tiny well swim baits. Believe it or not, uh, uh, these here, I think are going to go great on an uh, uh, A rig, right? Uh, and smaller finesse type applications. I'll do that as well. Last but not least, I gotta have some Kitech. I got the big giant Kitech over here. Much smaller Kitechs over here uh, if I'm doing some type of finesse uh, bait fish. Now, I also have a couple honorable mentions like um, in, in grass jigs. And I don't know why I came up with the idea of putting grass jigs inside of here with the paddle tail swim baits. But it worked, so I, I roll with it. Uh, maybe it's because you know a lot of these. Maybe it's because a lot of these you, we were fully expecting to put some of the paddle tails on the back of these guys. So I got a bunch of grass jigs, and you'll see on, on them I, I wrote the weight down. So a lot of um, uh, uh, six inch stuff there. I even snuck in a mega bass bait. You guys are gonna be like, what? Uh, a mega bass <laughs> dark sleeper in there, and I don't and I don't know why it, it's it's a paddle tail, it's a swim bait, it's a smaller, so I was like, ah, it's right here in this corner, so let me just dump that in there. So I do have some nuance, I would say, with regard to how I put everything together. And last but not least, we're gonna go into our terminal tackle box. And I'm not gonna leave this up because I'm not trying to dump this bait, these baits. Um, so everything from let's see if I can do this one. Everything from um, uh, EWGs, threes, fours, five outs. I actually have EWG as well as freight worm hooks in here as well. I got some drop shot hooks. I got some drop shot weights. This is that line through uh, jig head from six cents that I'm going to try on that whale swim bait. Man, I cannot wait to do that. I got some gigantic swim shaker heads. Um, gigantic swing shaker heads for those mag worms that I'm going to show you uh, as well. Bobber stoppers, cheddar bait uh, from Z-Man, for Z-Man, Z-Man products, um, shaky heads. Um, then I got some uh, BMC large eye swim bait heads. This, this is like my secret weapon for when I'm fishing pressure situations. So I can throw a small paddle tail swim bait on back of the bad boy, change up the color of the JK for the eyes, and then go to town. Okay, so that is the first budget box, which is my terminal tackle soft plastic box, but there's a bonus inside of this. Since I, uh, I laid these down, just like in this orientation, I'm able to do other things. I'm able to put my fast flats uh, 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 bag right in the front. And what I use this for is buzz baits and spinner baits. So I have all my spinner baits in this guy. I have a uh, buzz, buzz frog baits in this guy. They all like lay flat, just like this. And I'm able to get quite a bit. Man, I probably got 10 spinner baits in here. Between 10 spinner baits and uh, buzz baits and frog buzz baits, they all fit in a nice flat package. You know, um, because up until this point, you know, you have a spinner bait box and they'd be like these large contraptions. Laying on flat, man, makes all the sense in the world. Absolutely love it. Okay.
Five minutes ago, we talked about the Swing Shaker Jig Head, seven out hook, massive terminal tackle pieces. They're built for massive baits. I'm gonna show you the size of these for the band. Gigantic worms, mag worms. That's what those are for, man. So I'm super excited to talk these bad boys deep. Now, let me tell you about a hustle that I also use. So instead of having 15 packs of different colors of mag worms, much like these guys, I mix them up. So I take some out of each color bag and I just go ahead and I just drop it into one bag. That way I only have to take one. So now you got like five different colors in one bag uh, and boom, it goes right there in front of this. Call it a day. What I want to do is I want to put some air out of that first. All right, boom, call it a day. We're done. Now, I also talked earlier in, in, in um, early in the video about me catching fish and they get throat hooked. So I got these forceps off of Amazon. Man, I just put a little, put a little dangle dangle on there so I can connect it to my vest. But, but these here will save you when you have things like chain pickers when you're trying to get down to, inside of the throat or big bass when you're trying to get down inside of the throat. These are awesome because you can get down, click on and, and um, I guess what you would call it, clamp onto the hook and then you can actually use your hand to try to pull it out instead of trying to make sure you got enough pressure on the hook and you're doing that and causing more damage to the fish. Uh, I tend to think these here work a little bit better. Uh, other things I have in here are just like regular snips for uh, cutting break. All right, I think that's it. Let's put, this. oh, I got one more. Uh, more, this, this, this one here is slightly different. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Again, I'm not supposed to be doing bait reviews, but it always turns into a bait review. The ridge worm, I really like the action of this thing. If you sit in the water, you just pop it up off the ground. Like I do two pops, pop, pop off the ground, and then you'll see this thing change direction orientation and it goes down. And while this tail just, just flaps in the wind, pop, pop, flaps in the wind. It's great. I absolutely love the ridge worm. Highly recommend you grab you some. Again, I always have the same. I don't know why I, have, I keep doing it, but I'm gonna stop saying it. I'm not affiliated with six cents at whatsoever. I just like the stuff. And I rock with the beads. Really it, you know what I mean? Bunch of fighting and stuff in the fishing industry. I know it all sucks. Uh, some people think it's good for the industry. You know, between four facing sonar and Ben Milliken against this guy, against that guy. It's just like, dude, it's like, sit down somewhere. Shut up and fish, right? Uh, <laughs> that's how I am. I'm sorry, let me get off my soapbox. You guys are like, man, Tim's fired up today. I am because I'm super excited about this dude. Uh, so everything's there, just like I told you. I just slide everything down in the front, into the front, just like that, or the back. Just like that, very simple. Some of these you can just sit right up here on top, zip it up, close it up. Boom, and we're done. Slide this one over, trade places. Now, let's get to what everybody wants. Hard baits. Now, you see the orientation of these colony boxes are completely different. They're straight up, whereas the other ones are horizontal. These are more vertical. Now, oh, this is another one that I keep as well. Uh, just in case I catch that big old shark and I need to get way down inside of that throat and pull and, and get that hook out. That's what I have this for. <laughs> and never used it by the way. <laughs> Hadn't caught a fish big enough to uh, actually have to use it. That might be a good thing. I don't know, maybe not a good thing. All right, all right, let's take a look. Let's pull all this stuff out of here. time went into putting this stuff together. A great deal of time. I can't even explain to you the mind, just me. Like, okay, so if I put this here, I need to move this here and move that around. So it takes you quite a bit of time to be able to get everything the way you want them, but they do. Oh, by the way, these here, are st they're stackable. All right, first up is my Wig Big Frogs Top Water uh, bait, way big frog, top water poppers, 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 all right. So basically everything above surface and right at surface is in this box. Maybe a little bit of subsurface with the wake. Uh, I'm just gonna show you everything that's in here. Got some frogs, 
uh, a different type of tackle frogs along with uh, spinning baits, for example, like a whopper popper, uh, big giant poppers, uh, other smaller size poppers uh, from Lucky Craft. I uh, got a um, hyper jerks in there as well, also subsurface. Uh, evergreen this is a this is a secret weapon right here this is a 77 sb this is the big i think this is the 105 bunch of rash on those you can see that's some of my favorite poppers right there man uh then you got then you got then you got other six inch uh poppers too cat walkers and things of that nature um you can see this one has some rash on it oh look at that weight baits big giant large profile weight baits uh by the six so absolutely love those uh, you see that one's got some rash on it. This other one is, is, hasn't been used well. Uh, you got these other movement ADXs, uh, large profile type baits. Uh, then you have these, right? Um, these go from zero to one, uh, depends on the bill. I think that's a one to three. Uh, so I do I do like the speed glides uh, and I've caught, I've caught fish off. As a matter of fact, I think I actually posted a video of me catching a uh, big bass in Louisiana off this exact speed guide. So, um, so yeah, so we got those, and then you got some of these giant cane walkers. <laughs> Is this called the cane? I think it's called the cane walker. Let me see. Yeah, the cane walker 125. You can see that one's got some rash on it. But yeah, man, we got some big giant walk, big giant walkers, and we got a, a cane walker and Jay Walker or whatever. Jay Walker, uh, I think the cane walkers, yeah, cane walkers with the pop pop front and then the jaywalker it just has that smooth front it's just a walking bait this one here is an actual pop all right cool stuff i'm gonna have to change that around a little bit all right the next up is your, looks like my chatterbait box yep so chatterbaits jerkbaits five baits and finesse square bills So if, you, if you're wondering why these two are not filled all the way to the brim yet, because I have a special video coming next week. Yes, I said next week, we're gonna have a special video coming next week that we're going to actually add some more types of jerk baits. If you think long and hard enough, you probably already know what jerk baits I don't own that I should own, right? Think about that. So chatter baits, uh, uh, flat side, square bill, uh, smaller jerk baits, larger jerk baits, some suspending, some deep diving jerk baits right here. This one here, oh my gosh, dual reals. I think this goes up to 10 feet. Look at the bill on that thing. So we're getting, we're getting serious, but we're getting really serious uh, when we go over here. Uh, something that we haven't talked a lot about on this channel uh, are spy baits, uh, spin baits, spy baits, these guys. So I'm probably gonna do something this summer about that. Um, depending on, let me tell you, the hardest problem is finding where the fish are, right? Spy baits are supposed to help me find where the fish are, so there's zero reason why I shouldn't make use of that technology while I'm out on the water. Two more boxes, guys, and we are done. Medium depth crankbaits and they cheddar baits. Yep, lipless and then medium depth crankbaits. Similar, I can get, I got like four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven lipless in this one square. Right, so you can pack a boatload of baits inside inside of this thing. Uh, we got the axes, we got the, and, and I have them, uh, um, I, I write on the individual baits what their depths are. So we go everything from all the way down to the depths of the ocean to four, five to nine, uh, this is eight to 10, 10 to 12, and then you got some more that goes even, even, even deeper, eight to 12, I'm sorry, eight to 10, 10 to, 10 to 12, right? And then you got some shallow ones right here. So, so again, uh, if you've seen most of these baits, some of them you haven't seen. Uh, but yes, lipless and medium size. Last but not least is the big boys. Uh, I haven't played around in this area much, but this year I've I've invested, uh, bought several baits that's going to help me get to where I need to go. Starting with uh, blade baits, uh, bow loader blade baits, everything from uh, dual relax, realis to uh, yeah, I think, yep, yep. I got some, I got some six cents baits there too. I got some Rapala DT 15s, um, dude. I also have some Nomads, uh, and I do like the Nomad design because Nomad designs they even uh, write the weight of the bait on the back. And you're probably not gonna see this, but I'm gonna 
I'm gonna try to show you this anyway. Um, it's on the back, can you see that? Maybe not. Any, either way, it, it's got the weight on the back. I wrote the depths on the bill of all of them, so 15 to 18. I got two colors there. Man, Taco Warehouse has some sales. You guys just gotta be on the lookout to, to jump on those sales. Evergreen CR16, this is a brand new one that I've not even, I've not even used yet. Duo Reality Crank, uh, the G87. I was watching Tactical Bass on there. They talked about the G87. I was like, click, add the car. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw that baby man seeing it, seeing it, seeing it in in person, man. It's everything that I expect it to be. So let me listen to this. You hear that weight transfer system? That is insane. So I'm like, holy cow, they were right. You know, <laughs> when they do do the demonstration in the boat, I'm like, oh my gosh. Let me have that bait. So uh, when I got it, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, by by the actual bait. A uh, so, couple of those. Ouch, man! It's amazing at how freaking sharp this guy is. Some deep, deeper diving. Uh, 25, 25. So it's hard to get these in here, and that's that's the other problem. You're like, hey Tim, you only got like 10 baits in this one box. Well, it's just because they're so flipping big, and they're so hard to get back in here. You have to you have to orchestrate yourself to get this thing in here uh, the right way. And then of course they got the. The, the Six Sigma ginormous crankbait, 18 to 26 uh, depth diving. This one here pulled very hard. I fished that one, and let me tell you, boy, you, you got to crank. Once you crank that big bill, man, you're like, uh, uh, uh. It's, it's, it's definitely tough. So, whoo. So my 10 minute talk turned into like 25 minutes, but you guys like that, right? It's all good. I didn't leave anything out. I think we're all good to go anyway. Hey man, this is my Busby Tackle loadout reveal for the spring for my new John Boat that's coming. I'll make a video of that John Boat pretty soon, uh, but that won't be the next video. The next video will be doing a few, I have a few more unboxing, one from Tackle Warehouse, one from Dick Sporting Goods, and then um, we'll go from there. So again, thanks for watching. I really hope this is informative for you. If you have any questions, please drop them in the description. You guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. I try to get back to all of my comments. I try to answer all of my questions. Uh, man, I'm hoping to see a boatload of you cats on the water. All right? Thanks for watching. We out.